Summary of Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand A boy named Louis Louis Zamperini grows up in Torrance, California, in the early 1930s. He steals, plays tricks on people, and gets into fights. Pete, Louis's bigger brother, sees that he is going in the wrong direction and helps him focus on running track. Soon, Louis changes his ways and now is the fastest high school runner in U.S. history. After Louis graduates from high school, he wins a spot in the 1936 Berlin Olympics. Louis doesn't win a medal at the Olympics, but he does make a record for the fastest last lap of an Olympic run. The world is going to war while Louis trains for the next Olympics. Because of the start of World War II, the Olympics were cancelled, so Louis joins the Air Force. Louis becomes a bombardier after going through military training and is told to go to a military base in the Pacific. In 1941, Louis and the crew of the bomber Superman attack Japanese military targets with bombs that go off. Then, during a fight in the sky, Japanese planes almost destroy Superman. Louis and his best friend Russell Allen Phil Phillips are sent to a new plane and crew. Their new plane crashes into the Pacific Ocean during a normal mission, and only Louis the Phil and their new crewmate Francis Mac McNamara make it out alive. The men are stuck on a plastic life raft with little food and water and no way to protect themselves from the sun or the sharks that are always around them. The men gather rainwater, kill and eat a few sharks, and catch birds to use the meat for fishing. But it's not enough, and Mac dies of not getting enough food. 87 days on the raft without a home, Louis and Phil are found by a Japanese military ship. It is at a military base called Execution Island that the Japanese take Louis and Phil. They lock them up in small cages, feed them almost nothing, and give them untested drugs. The Japanese don't put Louis and Phil to death, instead, they send them to different work camps in Japan. Adamori, Matsuhiro the bird Watanabe, one of the head guards, picks out Louis to be beaten and screamed at. This makes the bird feel strong, and he thinks that he will feel even stronger if he can break the spirit of a great Olympian like Louis. Propagandists in Japan give Louis the chance to talk to his family on the radio at one time. The US Army said Louis was dead when he wasn't, but his family never gave up hope that he was still living. The Japanese sent Louis's message all over the US, which was the first real sign to his family that he was still living. Someone from the propaganda group tells Louis that he can leave the camp and stay in a nice hotel if he reads their propaganda on the radio. When Louis says no, he is sent back to the jail camp. Soon after, the bird moves to a different place, but he takes Louis with him so he can keep abusing him. Louis carries tons of coal all day at this camp. After being pushed by a guard, Louis trips and breaks his leg. The bird makes him clean out the pigsty with his hands since he can't work anymore. Louis's pride is almost broken by this humiliation, but he manages to hold on. The Japanese suddenly say that the war is over, even though they have been humiliating and abusing the inmates for over two years. As US planes bring food and clothes to the inmates, Louis, who is skinny and tired, finally feels free. The bird left the camp when he heard that the Japanese were going to surrender a few days before the war ended because he was afraid that the Allies would try him as a war criminal. Louis goes back home to see his happy family after getting some health back at a U.S. military hospital. As Louis heals from the war in Miami, he falls in love with Cynthia Applewhite, a beautiful woman who is very independent. Cynthia says yes to Louis's marriage proposal after only two weeks. A few months later, they get married in a church outside of Torrance. The military sends Louis all over the country to give talks about his time in the war, but the memories of being tortured make him start drinking a lot. His marriage starts to fall apart, and Louis gets PTSD, a serious mental disease that many soldiers have. After Louis's mental illness and drinking got worse over the years, along with his violent behavior toward his wife and children, Cynthia took him to a Christian revival meeting. There, he realized that a loving God had been watching over him during the war. Louis turns to Christianity for help, stops drinking, and gets over his PTSD. His marriage gets better, and he helps other people for the rest of his life while living a peaceful life.
About the author. Laura Hillenbrand grew up in a neighborhood north of Washington, D.C. She is the youngest of four children. She loved writing stories and riding horses on her dad's farm when she was a kid. She got chronic fatigue syndrome while she was at Kenyon College, which is an irreversible illness that made her have to quit school and move back in with her family. Hillenbrand moved to Chicago with her future spouse in the late 1980s. While she was still stuck at home, she started writing sports news. Drawing on her love of horses, she wrote the best-selling non-fiction book Seabiscuit in 2001, which was about a small racehorse who did amazing things. After almost a decade of fighting the illness and spending most of her time at home, she finished unbroken. Hillenbrand says that because of her illness, she can't leave the house. Instead, she writes books about amazing physical feats so that she can live vicariously through them. Hillenbrand lives in Washington, D.C. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.